management of diarrhea. The most important thing in management of diarrhea is to exclude the bad causes of diarrhea, the infectious diarrhea that leads to blood in stool. Blood in stool. Blood in stool is kind of a, an alarming, an alarming manifestation in diarrhea. Blood in stool could be either severe infection, infection caused by one of these uh, uh, potent pathogens, and the blood in stools means what? Means that the, this pathogen has invaded, invaded the bowel wall, invaded the bowel wall, and it is never viral. Viral gastroenteritis will never result in blood in stools, and it is never toxin, any toxin, any toxin, whatever potent it is, will never lead to blood in stool. The only, the only pathogens that cause blood in stools are the pathogens that have the ability to invade, invade the, the bowel wall. Campylobacter, Campylobacter is a common cause of infectious diarrhea that causes blood in stool. And Campylobacter is the most common cause of food poisoning and infectious diarrhea in the United States. The most common cause of food poisoning in the United States is Campylobacter. And Campylobacter can be associated with Guillain-Barré syndrome, ascending weakness. You have this diarrhea, you have blood in stool, and you start losing the ability to move and feel your feet and this weakness is going to be ascending you're gonna you're not going to be able to move your whole lower limbs and and when it reaches to up to your uh, cervical spine you will not be able to move your diaphragm and this is when you will need to be mechanically ventilated this is a very serious complication of compilobacter infections and some reactive arthritis also you get the diarrhea and a few weeks later you develop severe arthritis Salmonella. Salmonella is the second commonest cause uh, of food poisoning in the United States. Usually Salmonella contaminates chicken or eggs. Vibrio parahemolyticus. It also contaminates seafood and shellfish. Don't forget, what are we discussing? We are discussing the organisms that causes blood in stool. This is infectious diarrhea due to infection with one of these organisms and in these conditions you will find blood in stools. Shigella. Shigella secretes a uh, shiga toxin and this is associated with the hemolytic uremic syndrome and reactive arthritis yersinia entamoeba histolytica entamoeba is not a bacteria all the previous examples were bacteria entamoeba is a parasite is a parasite and we diagnose entamoeba by the elisa stool elisa and we treat it by metronidazole like any parasite or protozoal infection of the gut so these are the these are the causes of blood in stool I want to add an important thing here. These causes can also lead to diarrhea without blood in stools. Without blood in stools. How to diagnose this? Well, you need to detect first, do we really have blood in stool or not? So we do the fecal leukocyte test. This is the best initial test to search for blood cells, blood cells in stools. Leukocytes, leukocytes to know the infection. And the best, the most accurate test is stool culture to know what type of organism exactly do we have in the gut. How to treat? Well, in mild diseases, it, they resolve on their own. Just hydrate, keep hydrating the patient. In severe disease, when I say severe disease in a diarrhea, what are the indications of severity of infectious diarrhea? Well, too much blood in stool, fever, hypotension, tachycardia, abdominal pain, now you need to give a strong antibiotic to kill the bug and this is going to be ciprofloxacin, ciprofloxacin. Now let's shift to the causes of non-bloody diarrhea. Causes of non-bloody diarrhea. Organisms that can result in diarrhea with no blood in stool. The first group of organisms are all the pathogens that can cause bloody diarrhea can also present without blood in stools can also present with diarrhea with no blood in source. All the organisms, Campylobacter, Salmonella, Shigella, all these entamoeba hysteretica can present with diarrhea without blood in source. Added to that, the organisms that never, that never 
lead to bloody stools are viruses. Rotaviruses, norovirus, very common cause of gastroenteritis, especially in infants. Viruses never cause bloody diarrhea. Gallardia, it's a protozoa. Gallardia, with, which presents with floating, flatus, signs of steatorrhea, fatty diarrhea, never presents with blood in stools. Gallardia is more common in hem homosexual men and those who do a lot of camping or hiking and the stool ELISA is going to diagnose Gallardia and the treatment is going to be metronidazole. Staphylococcus aureus. Staphylococcus aureus uh, food poisoning is caused by a preformed toxin and as I said toxins do not lead to blood in stools. You need to have invasion of the gut wall to have blood in stools and Staphylococcus aureus food poisoning usually presents with mainly vomiting. It's mainly vomiting more than diarrhea and it usually resolves on its own. Bacillus cereus. Bacillus cereus. Again, this is a type of bacteria that leads to uh, diarrhea through a preformed toxin and it contaminates uh, Chinese rice and it presents with more vomiting uh, than diarrhea. Scombride, scombride. What's unique about scombride is this is the fastest, the fastest cause of vomiting and diarrhea in food poisoning. The fastest food poisoning manifestations happen when you ingest fish meat that has a lot of histamine in it. Histamine fish poisoning. The organism, the scombroid organism, produces histamine in the flesh of the fish. And when you ingest such fish, like uh, tuna, mackerel, or mahi-mahi fish, and this fish, the meat had histamine in it within 10 minutes. Can you believe it? You might have been still in the restaurant where you had the food and you start developing the vomiting and the diarrhea within 10 minutes of having the food. And because of this histamine, you might have also some wheezing, some flushing in addition to the vomiting and diarrhea. And the treatment, guess what? Yes, you're correct. The treatment is going to be with antihistamines because the cause is too much histamine so you treat it with antihistamine like diphenhydramine Benadryl. Clostridium difficile diarrhea. This is an important entity. This is an important cause of severe diarrhea and usually we see this condition in patients who have been using antibiotics like following the use of antibiotics some days to weeks after any antibiotic any antibiotic. Of course, some antibiotics are more notorious than others uh, of causing this C. diff uh, di uh, diarrhea, but let me be clear here. Any antibiotic, any antibiotic can lead to uh, uh, C. diff. Of course, the most notorious one is clindamycin. Clindamycin Floxacin, like ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, uh, strong penicillins like uh, augmentin can lead to this C. diff, but any antibiotic can cause it. What are the risk factors? Elderly, hospitalized patients, patients taking PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. Chronic therapy with PPIs increases the risk for C. diff diarrhea. What are we going to find in stool? We can find, we can find, uh, what are we going to find? We're going to find blood in stools. We're going to find leukocytes in stools. How are we going to diagnose C. diff diarrhea? We do stool toxin assay, stool toxin assay. And the treatment is metronidazole. This is the best initial therapy. If the patient does not respond to metronidazole, then we can use oral vancomycin. We do not use intravenous vancomycin because intravenous vancomycin does not make it to the gut. And in severe, severe, severe recurrent cases, we have the latest drug in the management of C. diff diarrhea. It's a very expensive drug. It's a $3,000 for the single dose of fidaxomycin. Fidaxomycin for severe recurrent cases. This is the best drug to prevent recurrence, of course, if you can afford it. Causes of chronic diarrhea. It's not within the scope of this course to talk about the causes of chronic diarrhea well we have the very well known lactose intolerance thing and this does not need any treatment that just stay away from dairy products except the one dairy product that's kind of innocent when it comes to lactose intolerance is yogurt you can still use yogurt even if you are lactose intolerant carcinoid syndrome is a unique cause of chronic diarrhea associated usually with some flushing uh, too much serotonin coming from your gut for some reason and the malabsorption syndromes celiac disease and the tropical sprue chronic pancreatitis whipple's disease all these are causes of chronic diarrhea 
and the anti-diarrheal drugs, the most commonly used anti-diarrheal drugs, usually, as I said, the treatment of diarrhea, no drug, no medication, and just watch for hydration. Just keep an eye on the dehydration and keep the patient hydrated. But if the patient really needs something to lower his gut motility, the best treatment, the best treatment is gonna be loperamide, imodium. It's an anti-motility, it's an anti-motility. And again, bulk forming uh, medications can help also. Our case study for diarrhea is a four and a half month old Asian American female infant brought to the ER because of vomiting, diarrhea, fever, irritability. So the clinical signs and symptoms that support a diagnosis of viral gastroenteritis in these patients are vomiting, diarrhea, fever, playmates at daycare center had similar symptoms, ESR elevated, wide blood cell count, and band differential elevated, lymphocyte elevated, and lymphocytes always go up in most of viral infections, and there is absence of leukocytes and absence of bacterial pathogen in stool. So, and of course, there is no blood in stool. There is no blood in stool. All these things point to viral gastroenteritis.